Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom, along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we welcome our special guest, Carrie Leaf. Carrie is currently a practicing psychotherapist and life coach holds her undergraduate degree in psychology with a minor in sociology from the University of Northern Iowa. She completed her master's in marriage and family therapy, graduating top of her class from Iona College. Congratulations on that, Carrie. And has been a practicing psychotherapist for over 10 years and working in the psychology field for over 15. She has worked in the field of psychology in a wide variety of settings, which include hospitals, community mental health, youth residential homes, substance abuse, military base, college, university, and private practice, and has worked with a wide variety of clients from all ages and around many different identified problems. She's also worked with individuals, couples, families, and groups. A mother of twin toddler boys and a stepmother to their older brother and sister as well, she's a fur baby mom to two boxers her dogs, enjoys working out, exploring her health and fitness journey, staying active, nature and being outdoors, traveling and trying new things. Welcome to the show, Carrie. So glad to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Well, I'm excited to uh, dive into our conversation today, Carrie. So I am curious, do you have your own business or are you working as a, a practicing psychotherapist for another company? I have my own business. Um, at this time, there's a group of about three or four of us right now that are sharing a space, but we're each doing our own our own thing with our own business. All right. Beautiful. So one of the things that I like to do for our listeners is help them to know that it's possible, right? To know yeah. that it's possible. So I'd love to have you speak a little bit about what inspired you initially to get into the field of psychotherapy. And then at what point did you make a decision to do your own thing? Yeah, good questions. I have known for a long, long time that I would be in this field. I didn't know exactly what it would look like. I just knew from about middle school age that this was what I wanted to do, um, the mental health field. My dad's a high school guidance counselor. He was, he's retired and, and taught some classes at the community college there in our hometown. So I grew up with that that language and, and the vocabulary and, and talking about feelings through talking and interacting with my dad. And then somewhere around high school, it kind of confirmed that I wanted to go into marriage and family when I was looking at relationships and my friendships and how they've shifted and changed and how much they meant to me. And then also realizing how important those relationships are, including the relationship with myself. And so then I knew I wanted to look at relationships in general, which led to the marriage and families masters. The second part, the second question you had there, like you mentioned, I, I went across the board. I've done a lot of different mm -hmm. things since graduation um, in a lot of different settings from New York to Illinois to Iowa. And through all that experience, I learned so much and kind of saw where my strengths were and what I was good at and what I enjoyed. And then seeing the therapeutic approaches that really resonated with me and was in alignment with my beliefs. And then also where I was seeing that I was the most effective in which therapeutic approaches were the most effective for my clients and my practice. That's where it started niching down to mindset and looking at negative belief systems and patterns and really taking a holistic approach as well. Mm, beautiful. And so at what point along the journey, Carrie, did you make that decision to, you know, fly on your own entrepreneurially as well as as a practitioner? Because, you know, for many people who 
get inspired to, especially to the helping professions, Mm -hmm. right? One of the things that can happen is that they can end up in a place where they're constantly going to get the next certificate or the next extra pile of letters at the back end of their name and kind of in hopes that they'll increase their income. Mm -hmm. And then they end up potentially becoming entrepreneurs and may still have that mindset of, oh, if I just get a few extra letters after my name, I'll make more money as an entrepreneur as well. So I'd love to have you talk about kind of your process in coming to the decision for yourself to set yourself up in your own venture serving people, because it's a different level of of awareness that you need to have and a different level of capacity that you need to have to be able to serve people in that way. Yes. There, there's so many different things that led to that point. One, getting the experience in the different settings, right? So getting a little bit of, of time and experience under my belt after the licensure was complete and I was fully licensed. And Two was that stuck feeling that that mm-hmm. stuck feeling like I just can't keep spinning here. You know, something's not working, struggling with that work life balance, struggling like I wasn't in alignment with who I was and what I was able to offer and knowing that I wanted to do something different, something more for myself and for others. And I did spin. I did spin for a while but knowing like something's got to give, something's got to budge and turning, you know, to kind of every option. Like you said, maybe I need these letters. Maybe I need to look at that. Maybe it's this company. I think I got a little bit lucky with landing with a supervisor that ended up kind of being a mentor and Mm -hmm. guiding and helping and and really being my cheerleader along the way of you can do this. You can go out and do your own thing. Like you're, you're great. You're fantastic. Go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. And having that mentor was crucial. That was Mm. crucial to have the confidence and the follow through and stop thinking and start acting. Mm. So, you know, it's a lot of things all together coming at crossroads at one point. Yeah, great. So one of the things that I want to just dive into a little bit deeper there is this idea of feeling stuck, spinning, knowing that something has to budge. And my guess is, that that is also kind of the intersection where you support people who come on to be your clients. So ladies, if you're listening here, if you are in that place where you have that stock feeling, where you are spinning, where you feel like something has to budge, I want you to just turn up your ears a little bit and let's talk, Carrie, about all of this is about making decisions, right? How do you help people to make the decision to do the work with you so that they can get unstuck. Yeah. So really I can't make anyone do anything, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot change anybody. I cannot fix anybody, but I am here as that guide, as that cheerleader, as the person that can say, okay, I'll hold your hand here. Step one, two, or three, you have it all within you. You have all your answers. You have all the skills and the ability, the creativity, you have it all within you. I am here to help you guide you towards yourself to your true self. And, and, and also, you know, that big piece of it is I am there to help you identify that negative belief system and that subconscious mind that is holding you back. We'll identify that negative belief system. We'll clear that out and we'll reprocess it and replace it with a positive belief system where you're thinking, feeling, and believing and acting like you are whatever you want to switch your positive belief to. You not only know it, but you believe it and it shows in your actions. And so if that is, if that's something that you're on board with, then by all means, I'm here for you and we can do this. Right. But if it's something that doesn't seem like it aligns or you're not ready or you're not there yet, it's not something that can be forced because it's, it's nothing that I'm doing other than guiding. Mm, Beautiful. I love that. It's really interesting because there is kind of two schools of thought 
around, you know, just do it, right? The grind, just do it, do the grind. And I'm actually of the school of thought where, you know, don't be seduced by the culture of busy and grinding up the wrong wall is not going to change anything, right? It's just going to actually be a waste of energy. So I want to talk a little bit before we go to the break about what it took for you to be able to value your own vision enough, like valuing your vision is often the piece that like we value our vision, but then we get that, you know, negative belief, right? Oh, I, I want to start my own business. I want to serve people on my own. I want to become an entrepreneur. You had that mentor, which was helpful for you. You had to value your own vision. A lot of times the stopping block for many people though, is the money, the money mm. conversation. So can you talk about what you either did for yourself or the kind of help that you you received to be able to value your own vision sufficiently to say, I'm going to do this even if I can't quite yet see the money. Yeah, I did spin in that hamster wheel for a long time. Mm -hmm. I got that extra certificate. I did the things and I felt so burned out. <laughs> and, and then I started, you know, looking in and looking at my environments and looking at what am I taking in? You know, what am I reading? What am I hearing? Who am I around? What does my financial environment look like? What are my fears? And I started cleaning up and I started organizing each of those environments. And that meant reaching out to different people in my life that maybe I didn't always turn to because some of the people that I used to or still do, but would, would regularly rely on were a little more fear-based and play itself themselves. So they weren't saying, yeah, go for it. So I had to seek those people out. I had to challenge my own negative beliefs and the money was huge. I have always had a not great relationship with money. Money was big and scary and negative, but security has been crucial, you know, to me feeling that peace of mind. And so really complicated relationship with money. So I did have to start digging in and shifting my views on money and what money means to me and seeing money more as energy and letting go of the fear around money. That was actually, you know, it's not something people tend to think about a lot with starting a business of shifting your views. They, they tend to think of how do I get the money? And then it builds more fear mm -hmm. and more reluctance and, and more spinning. And so, yes, all was that three things I listed? I don't know, but all of those things, <laughs> all of those yeah. things led me there. Yeah. Well, what I heard is you had to look in, you had to make the decision to clean up your environments, which is a very powerful statement, clean up your environments. You chose to seek out helpers who were outside of the environment of people who were fear-based themselves and in scarcity themselves and weren't going to be a good cheerleader for you. And you did a lot of work around the money piece. So we are about to go to the break. When we come back on the other side, we'll talk more about this and how you help others to get through their stuck thinking and spinning. Uh, but right now we are going to take a short break. We could be smart women. We could use your help since we're talking about money. If you are enjoying the show and want us to stay on the air, please consider making a donation at www.wickedlysmartwomen.com. We'd also like to ask you to share the show with your lovely lady friends who you think might benefit from our content. Help a gal out and let your sisters, mothers, daughters, friends, and colleagues know about the show so we can serve them too. I want to underscore here today that I'm doing two things. I'm modeling two things for you, lovely ladies. I'm asking for money easily, effortlessly, gracefully, and I'm asking for help easily, effortlessly, and gracefully. And I hope that I am also transmitting that capacity to you as well. I do want to say a big thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We're welcoming thousands and thousands of downloads from all over the world. I want to shout out this week to our listeners in Bolivia, the Czech Republic, and 
Ireland. And we will be right back with Carrie Leaf. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by Women in Transition, Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your wealthy life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And we are back with Carrie Leaf. Before we went to the break, we were talking about what she needed to do in order to make the leap into entrepreneurship and specifically what she needed to do in order to value her own vision. And I think that I would love to dive in a little bit more to this idea of cleaning up your environment, Carrie. So I'd love to have you speak about this idea of environment in the first place. Like I, I feel like a lot of us are like frogs in the boiling pot, right? We're the frog that gets in the, that, that's in the pot. We're in the pot with our family. We're in the pot with our friends. We're in the pot with our teachers. We're in the pot with our colleagues and the water's getting turned up. And ultimately we all end up being boiled. I'd love to hear how you both define this environment thing right? What is the environment? And then how do we become conscious of that environment? And then the big leap is how do we move to a new environment? Yes. So I would assume if you Google, you could find all kinds of different types of environments that we have in our life, right? So what I think of, I'm not thinking of just one environment. Yes, there's our environment. My environment is my one environment, but I'm thinking of multiple environments, my home environment, my relationships, my my beliefs, my faith, my religion, my financial environments, uh, my physical health, that environment. So all these different areas or environments in, in our lives, how are we doing in them? Where are they at? Am I really rocking it in one and completely neglecting in another, most likely, because there's a lot to juggle and balance. And we want to look through, and I really like looking at it as what am I tolerating? Because it might not seem like one environment is necessarily a, a huge disaster. Maybe it's okay. It's it's doing all right. But are there things in that environment that you're tolerating? And I'll give you an example. This might seem like just a silly one, but it has to do with my laundry. And, you know, so I was looking at my home environment. Okay. And the laundry, the way that the, the laundry kept piling up and I would spend all my time doing it on the weekend just made me irritable. And I would look at the laundry basket and I would get irritated and I'd get bothered. And that's just something that I tolerated day in, day out without recognizing how much it was affecting me, my mood on a regular basis. And when I switched my system for my laundry that I was doing one load every single night, and when it came to the weekend, I didn't have to do but more than maybe one load. It's such a relief and I feel better about myself and I feel happier and I'm not stressed out or irritated by the laundry. I had the same issue with like a, a closet in my kitchen. You know how people have junk drawers? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a junk closet and there were a lot of essentials in that closet. Every time I opened up that closet, instantly irritated, annoyed. Why can't I keep this together? What's wrong, you know, with me and my life and just... So if I open that closet up in the morning and I, and I start the morning out angry, that's no good for me, but I tolerated it. I tolerated the closet for at least a year. And then I had someone come in professionally organize it. And I have been happier ever since, <laughs> you know, it was worth every dime. So just scanning each environment and looking at what kind of things am I tolerating instead of 
allowing to, you know, paying, putting some time and attention into, and then beginning to thrive. So, and, you know, some environments might obviously be a disaster and maybe it's more than tolerating where that's a sinking ship and we've we've really got to attend to them first, but don't overlook the little things that you're tolerating every day, because as soon as we can clear out some of those tolerations and irritations, we got more time and energy, more positive energy to put towards the things where we really want to go. Mm, I love that. Well, it's funny that you said, you know, there could be the disastrous areas, right, of our lives that we definitely want to be attending to. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, wow, you know, if you're on the Titanic, you better make sure that the lifeboat that has the little pinhole in it, that you're actually taking care of that lifeboat that has the little pinhole in it, because sometimes... That- we actually need the lifeboat to get off the sinking ship. So um, beautiful. All right, Carrie. So I'd love to have you speak at this point about uh, maybe somebody that you have helped, a client that you have helped that would really highlight some of the work that you do around getting people out of being stuck and cleaning up their environment. Yeah, that's a good question because I do work with a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. It's generally a build upon and it doesn't necessarily, it's not always necessarily the case that what someone comes in for ends up being what we work on. Mm -hmm. But there's two that I think of just because they're, they're very recent. One was struggling with her, her health and fitness and weight and as we jump into that and and we really got to the core of it, one of the first things that we wanted to clear out even before her losing weight was to quit smoking. And that's a super hard thing to do, but she put the groundwork in and she took, you know, a step-by-step baby step by baby step in a holistic approach, looking at mind, body, spirit, and all of those environments and slowly, but surely she has quit smoking she hasn't smoked since, since I've been working with her and she's now on the next step of the exercising and the eating, but it's step by step, but we're watching her weight drop. We're watching her mood improve. So, so there's one, the other one that I'm thinking about was really wanting to move forward in her career and struggling because every time that she was ready to put energy into her career, some kind of fire would pop up in her relationship, her intimate dating relationship. And so that was always taking the energy and making her question herself and how to move forward and could she even move forward? And so we really put a lot of work into clearing out the negative belief of I'm not good enough that she was holding on to. And that not only shifted things in her relationship, but it shifted her to jump out on her own, get out of corporate and go out on her own. So those are the two more recent ones that really stand out to me. Beautiful. Well, so a couple of things I'm hearing there. One is that when you work with people, it's literally like pulling the thread on a sweater, right? You pull the thread on the sweater, all the other parts of the sweater start to dismantle themselves and reform in new ways. But I'm also hearing you like really holding that structure of we're going to take and break this down into, you know, what I like to call baby bird bites, right? Yes. (laughs) We're going to take it a little bit at a time. And then I think the other thing that I'm hearing is, you know, for most of your people, they are coming to you with negative belief systems. And so I, you know, not not everybody is going to say to themselves, oh, I have a negative belief system. Right. Right. So I'd love to have you in the last couple of minutes that we have here talk about what are they thinking before they get to you? Yeah, you're absolutely spot on. No one has walked in my office and said, I want to clear out this negative (laughs) belief system. Not a single one. So (laughs) some of it is I have to, some of it's psychoeducation. I have to teach and some of it's I have to highlight after I do a really, really thorough assessment of all those environments and their history and their family and their upbringing because it doesn't matter what you're coming to see me for. It really does not matter 
I promise you there's a negative belief system behind it. If not one, like five, you know, Mm -hmm. we're, we're all walking around with a subconscious. That's why we're not like, we're not necessarily aware of it. Some people are, but Mm -hmm. Generally, it's subconscious. We're not aware of the negative belief system that we're walking around with, and it affects every area of our life. It affects our relationships, our career, our belief systems. It affects every area. So it, it's usually after the assessment process, and I'm kind of highlighting, okay, here's what I'm seeing, and we're starting to connect the dots. And as far as therapy goes, therapy and coaching are kind of two different things, but it doesn't matter. I was going to say kind of cliche in that we can almost always bring it back to our upbringing, our childhood, our Mm -hmm. family of origin and where we developed that negative belief system. And that's not to blame anybody. That's just to see where it originated so that we can, we can reprocess it in a, an adult healthy mind, as opposed to the child mind that processed it improperly in the first place. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, Carrie. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. We want to let our listeners know you can find out more about her at carrieleaf.com. And listeners, we do love feedback. Please let us know what you thought of today's show by calling into our listener line. We'll have that number for you in the show notes. Or you can send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. I also want to let everyone know that I've been doing a little environmental cleaning myself (laughs) and discovered (laughs) that uh, one of the links that we have been promoting to our listeners for our Wealthy Life Readiness Quiz was taking people in through the quiz and just dumping them into a void. And so we want to let you know that we've got that link fixed. And so definitely feel free to take the Wealth Readiness Quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And uh, you won't be dumped into the void this time. So, (laughs) all right. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.